SD1. Tube Screamer. SD1. Tube Screamer. SD1. Tube Screamer. Right, there's only one way to sort this out. Oh. Fight! <laughs> Very nice. Hey everyone, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Right. Uh, oh, bit out of breath, Dan. Hold yeah. your breath. Doing yes. what you should never do when you play the guitar. Hold your breath. Yeah. You should breathe, like yeah. a conversation. More importantly, you should breathe through your nose. Yeah, I was just That's talking to myself though. That was the trouble with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Had a conversation. Oh, you know. Anyway. Me, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. We're having a look specifically at the Tube Screamer and the Boss SD1 today and going through the differences and how they sound in a band. Because it's really interesting when you hear them in this context, it's like really close. Yeah. But when you put them in a band, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, Little let's things see. Tend to, tend to jump out. So we will be joined by Doug uh, on the drums in due course, and one of us will play bass while the other one's playing guitar. Slapping the bass. <laughs> Just to put it into a bit of band mix. This is a format that we're trying out. This is the second time we've had a go at it, and uh, we quite like it. Yes, indeed. Um, we should say, please go to that pedal show store.com and buy merch. That's the main way we fund this show. Housekeeping, Mick. Housekeeping. Indeed. Yes. Uh, so please do that. And also... Massive thank you to everyone that's subscribed to the channel. Please do that as yes. well. It's yeah. great. There's enough advertising. There we go. Um, this has come about largely because we do a uh, viewers' comments and questions show on a Monday night. And it's come up two or three times where people have gone, I really want to hear the difference between a TS9 Tube Screamer mm -hmm. and a Boss SD1 Overdrive. Why, Dan? Well, they're actually very close. Uh, manufactured uh, sort of a year apart. The Tube Screamer came out in 79, 1980, and, you know, changed the world. Yeah. Very shortly after that, the SD1 came out. Um, but they're very close Circuit in design. Circuit-wise, actually yeah. very close. There are a yeah. few really important differences. Okay. Um, you know, there's different input capacitors and stuff, uh, and people do talk about the different clipping diodes, so the... TS9, the Tube Screamer, is what we call symmetrical clipping. It's got a, um, a diode in the positive and negative. The SD1 has asymmetrical clipping. So it's got one diode on one side and two diodes on the other. Right. So it clips differently on either side of the waveform. Yeah. But what's really interesting is, you know, 
apart from these differences, how similar they actually sound. So, yeah. It's a trip down memory lane for In me. I'm, I've been a massive fan of both Overdrives over the years. When yeah. I first got into playing the guitar and playing out gigs when I was in my mid-teens, the only thing you could really buy at that point where I lived anyway were Boss pedals right. or Arion pedals. They were the only two things that really existed in mm -hmm. the local music store. So I had every yellow Boss Overdrive going. And hearing it just a minute ago, which is genuinely the first time I've heard it in a little while. Wow. It brought back a few memories, actually. Nice. All right. Um, the other thing is you'll see two other very popular overdrives on the board there. Uh, BD2, Wazza Blues Driver, and a Nobles ODR1. They're there for context. We're going to switch them on and off. We are going to hear them. Um, but the deeper dives really is on the TS9 and the SD1. Indeed. Indeed. Context is everything. It is. Um, so before we bring Doug in and start slapping the bass and... <laughs> Come on! Bashing the tubs. Let's just hear them as we normally would on that pedal show, a couple of different guitars, into our two amps today, which are a Fender 65 Deluxe Reverb mm -hmm. and uh, a Supro Blackmagic 112, which we're liking. Oh, it's a lovely combination. So just if we hear that with the Leicester, yeah. just those two amps just by themselves. Okay, bridge uh, bridge pickup. Custom three pickup. I'm on 10. Oh, cool. 10, 10, 10. <laughs> No Les Paul has the right to sound that good. <laughs> it is the most astonishing sounding guitar. Tell it really is. So quite clean. Very clean. Um, the du Deluxe will break up a little bit if you if you slam it with this uh, guitar. Yeah. But interestingly, a lot of people use these pedals into driven amplifiers. Yeah. We want to keep the amps a bit cleaner today so that we can really hear the differences. The more limiting the amplifier is, the more those differences are sort of evened out. Ironed out, yeah. So as we hear the, the detail from the pedal, you'll be able to sort of make up your mind which you yeah. think might work best in your rig. Both amps are set at that point where when you start to hit them with pedals, they will start to overdrive naturally. So you are hearing a little bit of the interaction of yeah. the two, which of course is it's called a tube screamer, right? That's what it was designed to do. It was designed to push push the tube amps of the day. Anyway, um, come on then, Dan. Let's, um, let's do a quick AB with the telly. Okay. Um, the settings are sort of arbitrary. Obviously, the pedals aren't the same, although they do have the same controls. Um, so we'll just... We'll try a higher headroom and a lower headroom um, type overdrive just to see. Sure. Surprisingly similar. Yeah, they what, really are. What I mean, as a massive lover of tube screamers, mm. and having had the tube screamer at the centre of most of what I've done in my playing life. Sure. I'm I'm reminded 
that the Super Overdrive actually sounds a little bit more aggressive. It does sound more aggressive. So to yeah. me, just from those um, those examples there, the TS is a bit more compressed. Yes. Is that to do with the symmetrical clipping, do you think? It's... I, yeah. Uh, it sounds a bit smoother, yeah. perhaps, because of that symmetrical clipping. Yeah. I think, you know, the, the tone stacks are probably more to do with the differences. Right. Um, because we're not, I mean, the, you know, the amount of drive that we've got on them, it's not, you know, not really cranking them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there is, there's a roundness to the Tube Screamer. Without that, a doubt. Yeah, that the SD1. They, they both roll off a bit of bottom end, which is why I think you see them crop up in heavier yeah. gain scenarios. Yeah. So, you know, lovers of um, heavy gain tones will use a Tube Screamer quite often in the front of a gained amp to just a focus that mid range and um, roll off some of the bottom end. Uh, the SD1 <laughs> does equally good, if not better, job of it. I would say it really fascinates me. I've got a feeling it? that Zach Wilde is a fan of the SD1, if right. I'm remembering correctly. Right. There's probably a good reason for that. Let's uh, let's what we'll do. We'll crank crank the gain. We'll then run them clean, and then we'll bring Dougie in, and we'll actually hear them perfect. in a context. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So let's go for maximum gain then. Most people wouldn't run their tube screamers like this, but. I think we should hear it. Go for it, Dunboy. Sorry, struggling a bit there. Well, yeah, so interestingly, so remember when we crank the gain, you've got to turn that tone control up a little bit, otherwise things just get so compressed. But the SD1 handled that compression. There was still a bit of clarity there, whereas I had to really crank the gain on the Tube Screamer to get any top end coming through. Yes. Um, I'm not sure which I preferred the cleanup sound of. Right. Were you paying more attention? Uh, not particularly. <laughs> I thought. Well, I thought that. I, I thought they both sounded. I, I at one stage I had both on. I thought, what the hell's going on? But um, I thought the tube screamer because we started on the tube screamer, yeah. right? And I thought that sounded really nice. Yeah. You know, um, the SD one kept a bit of that front edge of the note a bit better though. I thought. Yeah. Um, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Surprisingly similar though. Let's try the Strat then. Obviously, not obviously at all. It seems obvious to me. Um, one of the great benefits of 
both the SD1 and the tube screen motors, they can fatten up a strat quite nicely. Mm. That's why I use them for years right. into Fender amps. So um, here's how I would set my tube screen motor yes, normally. Yep. I would have a lot of level, not much drive, and quite a lot of tone. Okay. And that what that would do is it wouldn't provide a lot of overdrive, but it would just fatten the strat up. So here we go. Uh, just I'll have it off for a sec. Yep. Can I just hear that to the telly for one second? Because that sounds absolutely extraordinary. It's really just loud. You, you you will push the. I had to roll off me thing a bit. Right. So you will push the preamps. But roll yeah, off the thing. Roll it. off the thing. I've never really used a tube screamer like that before. Like just a bit of gain, loads of level. Sounds amazing. Hopefully, what we'll hear when we bring Dougie in and start jamming is that's where you that's where the cut comes. Right. That's where you start to be heard in in the mix because it just gives you that extra little push there. Amazing. Let's see what we get off the SD1 then. So the TS is noticeably that sound, isn't it? It really is. And set like that, the Super Overdrive has more cut, a yeah. little bit more overdrive. I yep. think it actually cleans up a little bit better. Yep. Tighter. A little bit tighter. Mm. Try it with the telly. It's nice and loud too. That, in a nutshell, those last two things that Dan played is why the TS is so popular with Strat players. Right. And I think why more telly players, they just, you don't need that extra cut because it's got it all already. That's a subjective opinion. Let's bring Doug in. Okay. Let's get these going and uh, see what happens when we add a really basic bass and drums mix. Awesome. Ready? Yep.
don't know, need some sort of clever transition to actually when we're playing music, I think. Okay. Doug. <laughs> What did, anything in particular that you found? Um, I like them stacked. Stacked is very good. I found the ST1 certainly more aggressive. Yeah, what was interesting about that is obviously you need to be so careful about your volume levels when you stack, especially into a slightly higher headroom amp because as you heard, it starts to really take over. Yeah. But um, as long as you watch those output volumes, it can be a really great thing to just induce some feedback and all of that stuff. And it really sort of doubles up on those mid, range characteristics yeah, 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 yeah. and can really work um yeah really nice i mean I, we obviously we lent on the ts9 and the sd1 a little more than we did on the other two i did try and play the bd2 and the odl one one thing we're going to learn doing these week in week out is how to concentrate on trying to demo pedals and thinking about what to play that's a skill we'll both pick up down i think okay everything else will go though for me <laughs> ability to talk ability to breathe everything else if that's what's going to happen but no it's brilliant doug thank you so much thank you doug for gracing us with your presence. what did you think doug i thought it was great i thought it was a great sound what was your favorite pedal my favorite pedal was the blue one <laughs> Just that's the stock answer now. It's just right. pedals. Is there a blue yeah. one? Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Indeed. Uh, and also a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grab some merch. Grab some t-shirts and hats and mugs and I've got a Christmas tea on. Oh nice. Like that? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. probably still a few left. Um a massive thank you to our preferred retailers uh, in the UK and Europe would be... Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey, where you can buy most of this stuff, if you so wish. Indeed. We didn't even mention the SD1 and the uh, Tube Screamer. Nothing special about them. Just standard off standard the shelf. Standard off the shelf. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, okay, who else have we got? We got our friends in Brisbane. Uh, would be Pedal Empire of Queensland. And there are some links in the description below. There are. Um, if any of this stuff is available from our preferred retailers in the US, you'll see links that say USA. If you click those links and buy stuff, Dan and I get kicked back off that and it helps us fund this show. Make sure Dougie gets more than the tip jar today. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, also, a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Thank you so much. We thank really you. appreciate it. Okay, have a fantastic week. Let us know what you thought in the comments and your favorite way to use your SD1 and your tube screamer. And uh, yeah, and we'll see you on Monday for viewers, comments and questions. More Dad Rock Boomer Bends next week. Absolutely. See you then. Laters. Bye.